Hi there, this is Lee. And with this video, I'm talking about Black Men for Bernie. Um, there's a group of black men who supported Bernie Sanders through the primary, all the way up to the Democratic Convention. They supported Bernie Sanders. They saw something in him, in his campaign, that spoke to them that they wanted to uh, learn more about and align themselves with. They believed in Bernie Sanders. And I understand that because I believed in Bernie Sanders too. I was a Bernie Sanders supporter. After the shenanigans and dirty tricks and malfeasance and crookedness of the Democratic primary process that has been revealed to not be conspiracy theories but actual fact that there was collusion and corruption and deceptive practice um, against Bernie Sanders um, from various um, arenas that ensured that he lost the Democratic primary even though he won. <laughs> so once the Democratic uh, National Convention concluded and it seemed that the Democratic Party was determined to follow through with its choice of Hillary Clinton for the Democratic nominee, many chose not to follow, fall in line, come to heel, and line up behind um, Hillary Clinton. The reason being that it still seems to escape a lot of people's notice is the fact that Bernie Sanders' coalition wasn't just progressive or liberal Democrats. Bernie Sanders had Republicans in his coalition. He had Libertarians in his coalition. He had Socialists in his coalition. He had Greens in his coalition. He had new voters who had no partisan affiliation in his, affili in his uh, coalition. He had Independents in his coalition. All these groups they were not partisan Democrats, and therefore they were never, ever, under any circumstances, ever going to cast a vote for Hillary Clinton. They were never her voters. They never intended to vote for her, and they likely, at this point, never will vote for her. They are not Hillary Clinton's voters. And so the hysteria and insistence and um, crazy attacks against Sanders supporters are ridiculous. Um, you cannot approach a Sanders supporter who was libertarian in the first place and say, fall in line behind Hillary Clinton. They were never going to do that. The only reason that they registered or even cast a vote for Hillary Clinton in the open primary, I mean, for Bernie Sanders, or in the, in the open primary, they supported Bernie Sanders. They were never going to fall in line behind Hillary Clinton, and they, they still aren't. And probably at this point, they never will. The more she speaks, the more her surrogates carry her message of bigotry and hate and divisive, divisiveness and identity politics out into the airwaves, the more they're repelled. She's her own worst enemy. And so, Black Men for Bernie. Um, they supported Bernie Sanders. They did not support Hillary Clinton. They were never Hillary Clinton's voters or supporters. And so they supported Bernie Sanders um, after the Democratic National Convention's conclusion when beyond a shadow of a doubt, it appears that the Democratic Party was not going to go with the stronger choice, the logical choice of Bernie Sanders. Instead, they were going to go with the most flawed candidate ever in the history of politics uh, for their nominee. People jumped ship. I mean, some went back into the Democratic Party, but others said never, ever. Um, they just do not subscribe to the philosophy of win at all costs. Um, and they said, you know what? It's a criminal party. We don't want to be a part of it because only a criminal wants to associate with a criminal. Goodbye. And they went all four directions, five, six directions, wherever they came from in the in the first place to unite behind Bernie Sanders, they returned. Um, some have gone to Jill Stein, 
Um, they learned more about her as she emerged from underneath the radar because she basically suspended her campaigning for months because Bernie Sanders was running his campaign. And if you're there's someone who's 90% aligned with your platform, there's no reason for you to campaign. So Jill Stein actually lost months of campaigning while Bernie Sanders went through the primary. Once the Democratic Convention concluded, then she emerged and she came from under the radar and started her campaign in earnest and people have been finding her. But that's not what Black Men for Bernie decided to do. It's what I decided to do. But Black Men for Bernie decided to do something else. They aligned with Donald Trump. Donald Trump asked the question, what do you have to lose? And the media propaganda, as, you know, attacked Donald Trump in earnest as it had been attacking him. Um, and we know that the media is pretty much corrupted now um, by the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC. And now that Hillary Clinton has won the primary, she's in charge of the Democratic Party. So, yes, it's the Hillary Clinton campaign that is controlling our mainstream media. They've been launching attacks against um, Donald Trump, the same sort of attacks they launched against Barack Obama, against Bernie Sanders, against Donald Trump, and against Jill Stein. We've seen so much hatred and bigotry and sexism and misogyny and nastiness to the point it, it's repelling. Um, and that's the only way Hillary Clinton knows how to campaign, these identity politics. She doesn't want to discuss the issues because she has none. Her platform is shaky and shady as she is. And so she has to use identity politics. Only it's making her as repulsive to the voter as she had become by the end of the 2008 primary against Barack Obama. No one could stand to listen to her by the time June of 2008 rolled around because all that came out of her mouth was just nasty, hideous, sh sneaky, shady, gutter-level politicking, and no one wanted to hear it. And so Black Men for Bernie said, you know what? What do we have to lose? I mean, the media attacked Donald Trump from using that line um, as a recruitment tool, but even not, it, it, it worked. It worked. Despite what the mainstream media propaganda ridiculed him for saying that, it was just basically what people needed to hear to kind of wake them out of their stupor, their brainwashing, <laughs> the propaganda that they'd been um, experiencing all year long. It was a wake-up call actually. And it kind of resonated with me too. You know, what do we have to lose? Um, but I'm rolling with Jill Stein. Bernie, um, Black Men for Bernie um, have joined Diamond and Silk <laughs> on the Trump train. <laughs> and you know what? I say good for them. You know, they made up their own mind uh, for their own reasons. They're preferring Donald Trump, I think, because of uh, the business opportunities resonated and then also just the plain, direct approach. I mean, there was no crooked kind of smile in your face, stabbing in the back kind of approach that you find with the Hillary Clinton campaign or the Democratic Party. Um, Donald Trump is like, well, what do you have to lose? You know, what? It's up to you. And that resonated. Um, and you know what? Maybe the Democratic Party could learn something. Um, but anyway, I'm going to leave a link in this description, and you can see for yourself why the black man for Bernie has migrated to Donald Trump. Um, as I've said in earlier videos, Donald Trump is not the greater evil. Hillary Clinton is not the lesser evil. Um, Donald Trump is somewhat less <laughs> of a threat to the future of the black community than Hillary Clinton is. And a lot of people are becoming to see that. So I'll let you decide when you look at the, uh, the article.